What's up guys? In this video, I would like to recap some of the points of uh, the lower frequencies that I explained in the last video. And uh, in this video, also, I will be uh, summarizing all the bands at once and uh, to give the best uh, properties of each one and the worst of properties of each one to help you uh, decide what to purchase out there. So uh, let's get this thing started. I think we left off with uh, uh, HF. HF, which stands for high frequency from 2 megahertz to 30 megahertz. Here are the pros for HF amateur band. Number one, high power transmit wattage allowed. Uh, it's not unheard of to go 200 watts, 300 watts. I forgot what the FCC rules is to how what the maximum is, but uh, it's up there. Number two, long range communications without repeaters and satellite. You could go national, regional, and international. You could reach out to the world and find out what's going on and tell them what's going on in your area. Number four, many channels available to use. Number five, able to negotiate past blocking mountains and tall buildings. Good in all environments, desert, mountains, forest, provided there is no foliage blocking the antenna. For example, you could transmit in San Francisco. After that, it'll bounce off the ionosphere, come back down to middle of America, back up again, come back down to New York City or beyond. That's in the lower frequencies like 2 megahertz, 1 megahertz, 3 megahertz. But if you go higher in megahertz, like around 18 megahertz or 20, that frequency would somewhat filter through the ionosphere and not have that skip that you're looking for. The only time that you'll get any skip during that period would be during, if, believe it or not, during sunspots. And that's an 11 year cycle. Every 11 year, the sunspots are really active. The cons number one, requires an FCC amateur license, general class and above. This requires testing for two levels before you're using this band. Somewhat challenging and boring. Need to be technical proficient enough about antenna usage, not for the beginner. Number three, the gear is very expensive, 300 bucks and above for a minimum low grade rig for a whole functional setup. Antenna footprint is also very large depending on how long you want to reach out. Not practical for handheld tactical communications on foot or discrete vehicle communications. Better suited for command post, home or base camp. Not good for in-city tactical comm within buildings, tunnels or heavily constructed structures. The long wavelength prevents signals from infiltrating heavy constructed buildings. I'm going to run through these slides real quick until we get to VHF. We already cover a lot of this in the last video. There, do you have any idea what you're listening to? London Philharmonic? It's Venus. Huh? Venus. Why not? We bounced signals off the moon's surface. There's no reason that Venus shouldn't radiate impulses. No, I don't mean the static. Can't you hear it? The other thing? What other thing? Listen to it, Paul. Listen to the voice. <laughs> VHF band is the workhorse of all the bands in my opinion. It's got the compromise of antenna size and also frequency performance. And with radio work, compromise is the key to having a successful um, communications. 
uh, overall, this is the, the band that, 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 that I prefer among all if I had to choose. The 150 megahertz range, the VHF range, uh, and the amateur band it will be 144 to 148. And Muir's will be 154, and I think they have 151 megahertz. Only five frequencies, so you don't have much to choose from. But in the amateur band, which you would need a license, uh, which requires testing and all that, uh, you, more frequencies are opened up to you on that band. One consideration also to consider for a VHF band, so far I hope you notice that, that there's a pattern to all these antennas and frequencies. The lower in frequency that you get, the, the bigger the antenna would have to be to match the wavelength of that signal. The higher the frequency, the smaller the wavelength of, of that signal, meaning in turn the antenna system would also be smaller. So here is a 150 megahertz antenna, another Ringo antenna that's adjustable, and here's his cousin for 45 megahertz around that range. It, it almost dwarfs it, and this thing extends out to like 17 feet, the mass that is. And here's the uh, antenna representation on the antenna analyzer. It's a pretty good return there. Here's a vehicle representation of a quarter wavelength antenna of the 150 megahertz band. But it's too long, it's supposed to be 20 inches, the, the antenna that is. And so far, this antenna being longer, it's a lower frequency. It's uh, 67 megahertz here. This here is my 150 megahertz mark. This is just a, a harmonic, you'll see that. But uh, I'm going to trim it. And this is how you would uh, tune an antenna out in the field. Now with the formula for wavelengths, that would, sit, that would translate into this here being 20 inches long for 150 megahertz and I already marked it with that tape there so I'm just going to snip it right right above that location there and as I do watch what happens that signal got closer closer to 150 megahertz right now I, I think it's uh, uh, 130 around there. So I gotta go a little bit more to the right, higher in frequency. Like I said, the higher the frequency, the shorter the antenna. So I'm gonna clip some more. Not there yet. It's moving over. There it is, right there. That bump just went into the 150 megahertz. So I just shortened the antenna here to reach that particular setting. That's how you would tune a vehicle antenna or any antenna for that matter. For instance here, I could lower this mast here and it will raise the antenna or uh, the uh, frequency as far as being tuned. Here's an example of my field expedient antenna that I made out of transmission cable. I cut a little bit too much, so this one is tuned for 170 megahertz around there. But still within the VHF band. But you can see, again, I'm saying the higher the frequency, the shorter the antenna. So it's much more manageable for, for us in the field to wield around. Uh, VHF band, like I said, is the best band to have. If, if I had a choice, that would be it. Because uh, let's say you have five watts. One radio is 150 megahertz. Another radio is 450 megahertz. Again, with the same example. I'm able to cast out longer with 150 megahertz range with five watts than I could with a UHF radio. For the same given, for the same given 
power output so for, for the best bang for the buck I'm saying 2 meter range 150 megahertz range the VHF range that is the best band to be on for overall communications tactical communications I'm saying portable to portable that would be tactical communication and that's an actual you know term used out in the field in, in public safety tactical frequencies you're, you're communicating with another uh, group division or, or team a command frequency would be a repeater frequency they will set up a, uh, a portable repeater up on a hilltop or an actual fixed site repeater that's still functioning and that would be a sort of, of, of a command repeater where the upper ups and the people in charge uh, get intel from the field and, and, and disseminate information and instructions to the field from a, from a, a longer distance uh, you could also use the command repeater as a tactical uh, channel as well for, for longer ranges but, but the uh, communication unit leader is the one that determines uh, how the frequencies are going to be used but uh, I'm digressing here that's, that's, uh, that's uh, operational stuff but uh, 150 megahertz is the way to go uh, like I said only five frequencies are available without a license and that's the Muir's radio system, M-U-R-S. Uh, and the next available set of frequencies available to civilians would be the ham channels, uh, amateur radio. And you would need testing and to get a FCC license for that. So uh, those are your only two options. Here's a written summary of the VHF band. Mm -hmm.